You're watching Advisor Talk with Frank LaRosa. It's the only podcast offering unfiltered guidance and direct advice for anyone in the financial services and wealth management industry. Learn more today at EliteConsultingPartners.com slash podcast. And now, here's your host, Frank LaRosa. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Advisor Talk. I'm Frank LaRosa. This is Dale Dempsey, as you all know. Uh, today, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, no, it's not Blue Shirt Day. Although we are both wearing blue shirts. We are. Uh, was not planned. We did not talk ahead of time. Uh, but we're going to do something a little bit different today. And uh, we're going to get really, really, really technical with a grease board. Um, this comes under the category of you're better off just doing something if the information is right and uh, not worrying about whether or not the technology is you know, state of the art or whatever. Uh, this is all about content. And I put a post out a couple days ago about the net effect of taxes and, and advisors making sure they pay attention to the tax implications of their deals. And don't just make a decision to go to a retail firm because they say, oh, I'm getting 140%, which we hear all the time, uh, on my uh, on my transition and, and their independent firms only giving me 50%. We want you to really understand what the differences are in the taxes. And so what we're gonna go through today is essentially some, some basic math on how to compare a W-2 deal to a 1099 deal, and also adding in the uh, a sort of a 10-year analysis of what the total impact is going to be um, on you and your family. So uh, what we what we did over here, if I wanted to slide this over, is we have uh, two lines. So we have in, in red here we have W-2, so basically a W-2 option. And in, the, in black, we have what it would be if it was a 1099 option. Uh, we're going to make an assumption that we're using a million dollar producer. Well, you could, you know, you could even, you plug in your numbers. There's really right. five categories here. Right, right. right. So, so for illustration purposes here, we're using a million dollar producer, right? But you can take each of these different numbers based on your own production and, and do the math. And that's, that's the whole idea of what we're trying to get done here, to walk you through the simple f formula uh, for what you should be uh, doing. So if a million dollar producer, and again, I don't don't send me messages about that's not what a million dollar producer's deal would get. He'd get more than that or she'd get less than that. We're using what we see as, as averages, okay? So if a million dollar producer went to, you know, throw a dart at any, any W-2 firm, uh, they're gonna get, let's just say 140% up front so out of 140%, they're going to get $1.4 million in a transition. The same million dollar producer going to an independent firm that's going to have a, 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 an aggressive deal for a million dollar producer, and there are plenty of them out there. Let's just say for illustration purposes, they're going to get 50%. So the independent guy is going to get a half a million dollars on their deal. The biggest difference, which we talked about on, the, on my uh, behind the wheel, was that the $1.4 million is going to get taxed at, at, we're making an assumption of 45%. I'm not an accountant. I'm not a CPA. What I'm just saying is that this is a good estimate of what the tax bracket would be um, if you're making that kind of money. So, But again, you can plug your own tax bracket in and see what it is. 45%. So your $1.4 million deal nets you $770,000. On the independent side, the $500,000 deal at 25% because you're 1099 and so you're paying a lot less in taxes. So this is sort of state and local, right? Roughly 25% nets you $375,000, right? That difference is $395,000, right? To the positive on the W-2 side. So remember that number because we're going to come back to that later on. So that deal there, yeah, you're putting $395,000 in your pocket uh, by going to a W-2 firm. That's over, we're making an assumption that it's a 10-year deal. Okay, so your W-2 is a 10-year deal. Your average 1099 is usually a five-year deal. They're, they're, much, they're much smaller deals, much shorter length deals. So let's move over to the payout now. We're gonna make some assumptions here. So some of the assumptions we're going to make on your production payout is we know that 
in the first year or two, your production might go down, but then after the second and third years, your production is going to go up. So for purposes of this demonstration, we're just going to use a flat million dollar payout for 10 years. Okay. The, the average is, is roughly 80% the first year, 100% the second year, 105 to 110 to third year, and, and up and up and up. So we're just making this simple. So a million dollar producer, you're netting. So your production payout, your production payout is 45%. That nets you $450,000. If you were independent, net net after taxes, you ran a clean, you ran a clean, uh, you know, clean office. You weren't spending your money like a drunken sailor. Uh, you're netting 70%. Might be some platforms. It could be a little bit lower, 65, 66. Some it could be higher, 71, 72, 73. So we're just using 70. So your million dollar producer, you net. Seven hundred thousand dollars. All right. So three hundred fifty thousand dollars to the positive on your on your W on your ten ninety nine. But the net of, we want to get into the net effect of the taxes. So again, you net four fifty in a W two world, forty five percent in taxes. You're netting two hundred forty seven thousand dollars after taxes. In the 1099 space, 700,000, 25% tax bracket, you're netting 577, right? Or what's that? 330,000. So roughly $330,000 to the positive going independent. One of the things that we don't necessarily talk about what that you should be aware of is when you're when you're W2, you you hit what's called AMT. I'm not going to get into what AMT is. You probably you probably know what that is if you're if you're in this world, right? Alternative minimum tax. In the 1099 space, you're not subject to AMT on the on the personal side. You are, but on the corporation side, which is how you're going to get comped, because all of your expenses, right? No AMT. All of your expenses come off the top of your business, so you're never you're not going to hit AMT um, on the business side. So three hundred thirty thousand dollars to the positive. You picked up three hundred ninety-five thousand dollars when you went when you went W two, but you essentially made up the difference in let's just say eighteen months. Right, worst case is two years. You make up the difference in your upfront money with the 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 increase in income that you're making after tax. That's a huge difference. You can, by the way, you can tell which handwriting is mine, which is Dale's. Dale's is the neat <laughs> handwriting. Mine is a really sloppy handwriting, right? Um, and so, what does that mean for the in the totality of a ten-year deal? Because I always we always tell guys, hey, look, you should compare deal to deal over a period of ten years. Because when you're W two, it takes you ten years to realize the whole figure, right? So over a ten-year period of time, if you're netting two forty-seven. Right, so you net two point four seven million dollars plus your seven seventy in your transition. So you're at three point two million dollars over a ten year period of time. Running the same math, you net five point seven seven million dollars as a ten ninety nine, plus the three hundred seventy five thousand dollars in your transition bonus. So that comes to six point one million dollars, or plus two point nine million dollars to the positive on the ten ninety nine side. And the biggest, for me, you, you have a decision to make when you look at those numbers, right? The decision is you have firm and you have family. Who would you rather have that money? The firm, W-2 firm, or your family? Because if you go independent, this goes to your family. Okay? If you go to, if you go to a W-2 model, this extra $2.9 million is essentially what the firm is keeping. Right, because you're not realizing that. So we just wanted to run through this to give you some color on what you should be thinking about when you're looking at a 1099 option. Yeah, I was going to say. I so somebody's going to make this comment. This 140 percent deal. Well, so what if I bring in another 100, 200 percent? So you essentially you just take this number and you extrapolate it out. Really, you're what's 1.4 million. You're still yeah. ahead by almost yeah. two million dollars. Right. But you're saying if they if they 
if they hit all their bonuses, right? Sure. A total total deal. You're still behind in a W two model in this by a million, couple million. Right. Yeah. What 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 we didn't calculate into this, which you could run, is what if you hit your back ends? Right. Right. So some of these firms have back ends. Uh, a typical deal like this, one forty, you're going to get back ends of um, let's call it. 10 to 20% a year for, for, for four years, so another 80%, maybe 100%. Um, but in years uh, three, four, and five, you're typically at 125 up to 150% of your original hiring trailing 12 uh, in order to hit those numbers. So you have to be, you know, you have to be pretty confident that, you know, five years from now, you're going to be at, you know, $1.5 million plus in order to hit those back end numbers. Right. But, so even if you factor those in, it's still not going to come up to two point nine million dollars on a million dollar producer, right? Right, but that's right. that's a great point. You'll be ahead. You'll be ahead. You're going to be ahead economically. Maybe it's one point nine million dollars, right? Yeah. Point is, you're going to be ahead. Well, the, well, you know what? I, maybe my thought is the point. The point is, you need to do this math, right? If you which don't is, do this, you you won't. Which is where I'm math. getting to. And we have spreadsheets. We we've done this for clients where we will we will go through their actual their their deals and their practices and. Sh- spreadsheet it out over a 10-year period of time, calculating all their local expenses, right? So we get, we want to make sure we, we understand what this number is. We can get to that number. Uh, these are the things that you should be doing, whether you're working with someone like our firm or some, or some other firm or you're not doing it at all. You need to be running through this math. This is how you figure it out, okay? So you can pause the camera. You can take a screenshot. You can email, DM me at franklarosa.elite or email my email me at frank at Elite Consulting Partners or Dale at Elite Consulting Partners um, or call us, 856-316-4653 for Dale, 4651 for Frank. Uh, and we'd be happy to walk you through how the economics on a deal would work for someone like you. So thank you very much for, uh, for joining us. Uh, maybe next week we'll do like White Shirt Show or something like that. But... Um, <laughs> We hope that you you enjoyed this whole thing. Um, we hope it was helpful. We'll talk to you next time. Great talk. Great job, boys. Thanks for watching Advisor Talk with Frank LaRosa. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out some of our other episodes. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And we will see you back here next week.